Welcome back uh, to the class. We Earlier, we were looking at the energy quantization, looking at the basic concept of uh, Planck's theory and equation, and uh, energy of uh, photon energy with respect to the frequency, the speed of light, and the wavelength. So here, we want to look at uh, uh, the second part of energy quantization. We will be considering the photoelectric effect. What is the term photoelectric effect? Okay, but before we look at the term photoelectric effect, we need to define some uh, other related terms such as thermionic emission, secondary emission, field emission, then we look at photoelectric emission. The term thermionic e emission is the emission or when electrons are released from the surface of a metal that is heated. Okay, this is due to uh, temperature changes. We can say application of heat which allows electrons to gain enough energy to escape the surface of a metal. Okay, for secondary emission, the electrons gain enough energy by transfer from one high energy particle that strikes the material from outside. So that is where we talk about secondary emission. Okay, we also look at field emission. In field emission, a strong external electric field pulls the electron out of the material. This is what we call field emission. So this kind of electrons are pulled out by a very strong external electric or magnetic field, or sometimes electromagnetic field. Okay, so in the case of photoelectric emission, it occurs when the light, that is electromagnetic radiation, shining on a metal or a particle, such that the minimum energy that is striking the surface is having a very high frequency to be able to liberate the electrons from the surface of the metal and in this case the work function of the metal are usually overcome so we are going to look at these terms uh, their relationship in respect to the kinetic energy of the electrons that are liberated from the surface of a metal and we'll also look at it in respect to uh, Easton's photoelectric equation what is the implication of this equation okay so electromagnetic radiation interacts with electrons within metals and gives the electrons increased kinetic energy. Light can give electrons enough extra kinetic energy to allow them to escape from the surface of a metal. So therefore, photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons when electromagnetic radiation, like light, hits a material. Electrons emitted in this manner are called photoelectrons. Okay? And this phenomenon is commonly studied in uh, physics electronics, in the field of chemistry such as quantum chemistry and so on and so forth. So we are going to look at the, uh, how the electrons are liberated. From the diagram, we can see that the uh, power that is connected to the uh, tube, that is the uh, vacuum tube, such that the dictator, which dictates the electrons and the metal surface, so light is coming in from this direction, light coming in from this direction. So as light is coming in from this direction, it strikes the surface of the metal. And when it strikes the surface of the metal, the electrons are emitted. So this is what we call the photoelectrons or photoelectrons moving along the path that you can see it. So in most cases, we consider the uh, circuit as shown in the diagram, which is used for producing photoelectrons. Okay? Based on the uh, mathematical relationship, we can say that uh, HF, E0, or E, is equal to W0 plus uh, KE. E equal to W0 plus KE, where E equal to the photon energy. That is the photon energy. E is the photon energy, and uh, W0 is the work function. That is the work function of the metal. And the Ke is the kinetic energy, kinetic energy of the metal, sorry, of the electrons that are liberated. So considering this equation, we recall from our previous uh, uh, analysis that H equal, E equal to HF. E equal to HF. Okay? E equal to HF. And... Um, if E equal to HF, E is also equal to H, HC over lambda. 
hc over lambda. We can also consider this work function w naught as the uh, minimum amount of energy required for an electron to be liberated when the light that is incident overcomes the, this energy. That is the work function. Okay, so that is the work function for kinetic energy Ke. We can say that work function equal to EVS. We are going to look at the, this relationship uh, later. Then we'll look at kinetic energy. Kinetic energy Ke equal to half mv squared. Half mv squared. Where m is the mass, v is the velocity of the electrons. So energy of the photon, that is the photon energy HF, is equal to W naught plus half mv squared. So we can make the kinetic energy the solid of formula and uh, look at how we can calculate the velocity of the photoelectrons. So we say half mv squared is equal to HF minus W naught. Or we rewrite it as E, which is the photon energy. E photon minus the work function equal to half mv squared. So we'll make V the subject of formula. V squared equal to 2 in brackets. The photon energy, E photon, minus the work function divided by the mass of the electron. So V can be equal to square root of uh, 2 in brackets. Photon energy, E photon, minus the work function divided by the mass of the electron. So with this, we can... Uh, solve for the velocity of the electrons that are liberated from the surface of a metal. So considering this fact, we can also consider uh, other aspects of um, uh, photoelectric effects when we consider the graphical representation of the equation. Okay, as shown in the diagram, we see that the photon energy is dependent on the frequency with a direct relationship. However, the gradient of the curve is such that it is the Planck's constant h, which is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second. Also, at the point of intersection, which we have here, that is the threshold frequency. Okay, that is the threshold frequency. And at this point, we have the uh, work function. Okay, let's quickly have a sketch of that. We have something like this. Or we have something like this. We have the energy. As the photon energy, we have the frequency. Then we have this going down. And we have this. So at this point, and it breaks. So this point is the work function of the metal. So here is the, uh, what we call the threshold frequency. This point is threshold frequency. Threshold frequency. That is the minimum amount of frequency at which the radiation uh, the photon radiation can emit the electron. So, based on this uh, graph, this represents the relationship between the photon energy and the frequency of the uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation. So, we consider other aspects. We consider um, application of photoelectric effects. Light with energy above a certain point can be used to knock electrons and uh, free them from a solid metal surface. According to uh, some theories based on uh, Scientific American. The application of photoelectric effects brought us what we call the electric eye. Electric eye, door openers, light meters used in photography, solar panels, and photostatic copying. The photoelectric effect has many practical applications, which include the photocell, photoconductive devices, photosensors, solar cells, and so on and so forth. But we can have a photocell, which is usually a vacuum tube with two electrodes. Okay, so, and that is for the uh, photoelectric effect. So we can look at some examples uh, based on calculation, where we are given that the work function of a metal is uh, seven electron volts, and um, the photon energy, E, that is required to liberate an electron from the surface is given as a... Uh, 10 electron volts, and maybe we are asked to calculate the kinetic energy of the electrons that are liberated from the surface. So, if you are given these parameters, we recall that E is equal to W naught plus Ke. That means Ke is equal to photon energy minus work function. 
So E equals to 10 electron volts minus work function 7 electron volts. When we subtract 10 minus 7, we have 3 electron volts. So the kinetic energy is uh, 3 electron volts. We can calculate the uh, what we call the velocity of the electrons if we know the mass of the electrons. So if we say that half mv squared is equal to 3 electron volts, we know that the charge, 1 electron volt, is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of my, minus 19 joules. So we can substitute that and say half mv squared is equal to 3 multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And when we multiply 3, multiply by 1.6. 3 multiplied by 1.6 is equal to uh, 4.8. So we have 4.8, 4.8 multiplied 10 raised to the power of minus 19. Okay, so we'll cross multiply, mv squared equal to 2 multiplied 4.8 times 10 raised to the power of minus 19. Okay, divide both sides by m. So using the mass of electron, we can say the square root of uh, 2 times 4.8 is uh, 9.6 times 10 raised to the power of minus 19 divided by mass. And the mass of electron can be used in that case to solve when we know the mass of the electrons to be uh, equal to 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms. So when we substitute mass of the electron, we have square root 9.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 divided by 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 31. So you can complete this uh, analysis and uh, do the necessary calculation using your calculating device. Okay, from here, we can also consider some other aspects where we consider how we can calculate the work function or what we call the stopping potential. So the term stopping potential is derived from the term potential. And this is the minimum amount of energy required for an electron to be stopped within an electric field when they are liberated from the surface of a metal. So therefore, the stopping potential is given as uh, this relationship, W0 equal to EVS, where Vs is the stopping potential. Vs is the stopping potential. Okay, so the Vs equal to W0, which is the work function divided by the electronic charge. So we have this relationship. Okay, so E equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, uh, Coulomb, that is the charge on the electron, and given that the work function on the metal, if we are given the work function on the metal as 12.4 uh, electron volts, how can we determine the stopping potential for a particular, for that same particular metal? For us to do that, we need to use this formula Vs equal to W0 over E. So W0 is uh, 12.4 electron volt divided by E. So E can cancel E off. So we have 12.4 volts. So that is the stopping potential for a given uh, metal where the work function is 12.4 uh, electron volts. Recall that one electron volt, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. And the charge, one electron charge, electronic charge is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. So we can use that uh, uh, paripasu, using that uh, with respect to the other, we can solve for the stopping potential with, um, when given the work function. X-rays. Want to look at the term X-ray. What is an X-ray? Uh, X-rays are very energetic form of electromagnetic radiation that can be used to take images of the human body. Okay, X-rays are types of electromagnetic radiation probably most well known for the ability to see through a person's skin and reveal images of the bones beneath it. Now, the X-rays we have first produced by Wilhelm Rothgen in uh, 1905 or 1895 when he was trying to experiment on the properties of uh, the electrons. Okay based on the atomic theory. So the X-rays were discovered by the German physicist Wilhelm Rodgen in 1895. Okay? 
At that time, X-rays were predominantly used to view the internal structures of the human body. And uh, before you could know it, most of the scientists that uh, did research in X-rays were afflicted with cancer because they were not aware of the dangerous effect of X-rays. So production of X-rays. X-rays are produced when electrons are suddenly decelerated upon collision. And with the metal target, these X-rays are commonly called breaking radiation. If the bombarding electrons have sufficient energy, they can knock an electron out of an inner shell of the target metal atoms. So X-rays are produced by using this device that we can see here. We have the, uh, the voltage is an extra high tension voltage up to the tune of about 20,000 kilovolts. And uh, we have a vacuum. We have the X-ray beam that is uh, coming out from the copper anode and heavy or heavy metal within that region. Then the electron beam that is going to strike the surface. So when the electrons strike the surface of the metal, X-rays are emitted. Okay, so that is how X-rays are produced. The name X-ray came from the fact that uh, the discoverer, William Rogin, could not name it or carry out, give it a particular name, so he called it X radiation. X there means unknown. That means the nature and properties of the rays were initially unknown. But with time, we are able to discover that X rays can have a lot of properties. And the name X rays was, the name X ray was given to it as a ray that have. Uh, a shorter wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum it requires high voltage to produce X-rays. They are used to capture the human skeleton defects. They travel in straight line and do not carry an electric charge with them. They are capable of traveling in a vacuum. Okay? They produce secondary and scatter radiations. They affect photographic films and plates. They ionize gases. They are electrical electrically neutral. So these are properties of X-ray. Okay, other properties Talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, we have RIVOS G, okay, or we say R-O-M-I-V-U-X-G. Okay, arranged according to their increasing frequency. Okay, so R here is the radio waves. RM is the microwave. This is microwave, radio wave. We have the infrared radiation, the visible light, the ultraviolet rays, the X-rays, and the gamma rays. So X-rays is next to gamma ray. Gamma ray have the highest penetrating power and uh, uh, cannot be stopped by any uh, objects except by very thick um, uh, solid, or let me say, lead solid. X-rays can, are cancerous when they are in excess. They are also used for treating cancer because uh, they can penetrate the bones. Okay, gamma rays are also used for the same purpose. But when you look at other rays like um, electrons, electrons travel, but when they get to the magnetic field, they are deflected to the northern pole. Protons, when they travel, they come to the magnetic field and they are deflected to the southern pole. Okay? But neutrons travel in a straight line, just like x ray They are also uh, they are neutral. They don't have charges. But these other two have charges. Electrons have negative charges. Protons have positive charges. So they are deflected in the electric and magnetic field. So this describes the a summary of the uh, additional properties of X-rays. So we can talk about an example uh, where an X-ray particle an X-ray that is uh, traveling such that the frequency is uh, 20 megahertz. The frequency is 20 megahertz. And uh, we are asked to determine the energy of the photon or radiation they are carrying. So therefore, we can use the formula according to Planck's equation, E equal to HF. And that is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 multiplied by frequency 20 megahertz. Megahertz is uh, 10 raised to the power of uh, 6. Okay, so when we multiply that, we get the answer. 20 multiply 6.63. 6.63 multiplied by 20. 
is equal to 132.6. Okay, we can use indices here, minus 34 plus 6. So we have 132.6 multiplied by 10, minus 34 plus 6 is a minus 28. We can shift this 1, 2, we have 1.326 multiplied by uh, minus 10 to the power of minus 26 joules of energy. So this is energy carried when the uh, frequency of X radiation is 20 megahertz considering the uh, energy of the photon that it will carry. But we can recall that light travels with a speed of uh, 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. So with this, we can also calculate the uh, photon energy of uh, a certain radiation if the wavelength is known. Let's assume that the wavelength of X radiation is given as uh, uh, 1,000 uh, millimeter. 1,000 millimeter. What is the photon or of the radiation or the energy of the photon that it carries? So using the formula E equal to HC over lambda, you can solve this by saying 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 multiplied by C, which is 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by lambda. The lambda there is 1,000 millimeter, and that is 1,000 multiplied by uh, 10 to the power of minus 3. Okay, so 1,000 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3. You convert it to meter. So you can solve this and do the final uh, calculation. So with this, we have uh, been able to establish the uh, factors or the theories behind what we call X-ray production and the properties of X-ray and uses. Okay, so we have come to the end of uh, this class. In our subsequent class, talking about uh, wave duality of matter, we are going to discuss further what is called binding energy, uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and how the, uh, the effect of the uncertainty principle on uh, X-rays and neutrons. We're going to look at how we can measure uncertainty in certain parameters of the uh, energy quantized uh, states. Okay, so thank you for listening and uh, happy watching.